Welcome in to the CHGO Blackhawks post-game podcast. One last post-game show for you here. Game 82 goes to the LA Kings 5-4 in overtime. I'm Jay Zawoski with Greg Boyson and Mario Tirabasi. Thanks for being here with us this morning. Oh, gosh. <laughs> clever. I'm so clever. Yeah, you're right. Woof. Law <laughs> is here. Spinning it's tomorrow the dials. now. <laughs> it's tomorrow. Uh, we're going to break this game down. We're going to reminisce on the season. We're going to look big picture like we always do. Hey, we really do appreciate you being here. Honestly, mm-hmm. please hit that like button for us. Uh, make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube page as well. And if you're listening on the podcast in the morning, as a lot of people do, over your cup of you're coffee, getting your coffee. Uh, make sure you are subscribed. <laughs> the make only sure time, you are following. The only time people drink coffee. Yes. Uh, make sure you give us a five star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And here's the thing: I know we say this every show, but if you've not done it so far, how about a nice end of season reward for us? Jump on Apple Podcasts, jump on Spotify, jump on both, leave us a five-star review. And if you're one of those traditional podcast listeners, head over to CHGO Sports on YouTube, subscribe to the page, like a couple videos, you see something live, hit that like button, and let's all help each other out here. It was a long 82 games, and we're going to break down game 82 right now. So, fellas, the Hawks had a lead late. Bless you, Philip Kurashev with a really unfortunate Delay of game, puck over the glass. Oh, the uh, Kings tie it Worst late, hockey. and then six <laughs> seconds into overtime, Ugh. Adrian Kempe snipes one over <laughs> Arvid Soderblom, and the Hawks lose. Oh, just a, a really stinky fart to end the uh, yeah, to end the he, season. Uh, in the time it took us to figure out that that was Adrian Kempe on the ice. He, he scored in the game. <laughs> I, yeah. yeah. I mean, I was all, I was writing the description. Oh, the Hawks win, blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Yeah. Unfortunate, oh, so unfortunate did. play. By, but listen, the kudos to the Blackhawks. They had no business even yeah. in, being in overtime. Not at all. They were down cool. three to one. They were getting out shot four to one in the game. <laughs> yeah, it was rough. And they, they came out and scored three quick goals in the third period to, to take a, a four, three lead. Mm hmm. And then you give up the, the power play goal at the end, a six on four goal because they had the goalie pulled. Right, and then, right. uh, you know, it's still a fun game. We had a lot of fun to take yeah. on the uh, watch along. Yeah. So those of you, I know a lot of you were watching with us. Yeah, thank you, that. everyone, for thank doing you, that. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. I appreciate uh, everyone uh, who joined yeah, us. Yeah, we talked a, a lot of good stuff. We had some... Utah thoughts and other thoughts and that still Utah lives on YouTube, right? The, Utah thoughts. Utah thoughts is one of the yes. Taylor Swift. Very much so, yeah. It might be. Yeah. Yeah, thoughts. I mean, look, like if you if you miss the watch along and jazz, go listen to it. Like it's just it's basically just a long podcast of us talking. Yeah. Like we're not breaking down the game no, very much. We, we're just talking we talk about, about very little hours. about the game. Yeah. <laughs> very little. We yeah. talked about yeah. we we educated Mario on a tribe called Quest. Uh we discussed sure. favorite misfit songs. Yeah. Uh, All sorts of fun we, stuff. We acknowledged. We looked at Bonnie uh, McMurray. We we uh, we, we acknowledged. <laughs> Did we? I missed that. We we started off the show by f- giving a professional wrestling legend his long overdue kudos, the great Poutine Machine, Canadian's <laughs> greatest <laughs> champion ever. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Yeah. Uh, we need to put that into some uh, AI image generation. Poutine Machine, there you go. champion Canadian wrestler. See what happens. Well, let's give let's give the Hawks some Probably credit in this one. They for every chop he gives you. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. Sorry. They played <laughs> sorry. with uh, five defensemen, which means they actually played with three defensemen because Jared Tenorti and Jacob Magna were in the Two lineup. And a half. Uh, and they got the LA Kings overtime. And they, if not for an unfortunate hop for Philip Kurashev, they very right. likely would have won this game. What I loved about the this game, there are a couple things specifically player wise, but just as a team, they just came out. We're like, what do we have to lose? 
Yeah. Let's just go play. Like, and yeah, they got massively outshot, but early on in the game, shots were like six nothing and then shot attempts were six six. It was like ten to one yeah. at one point in the first period. I mean, I think they scored uh, the the Reichel goal was like their fourth shot of the of the game and they were getting outshot twelve to four. Like it was they had seven shots on goal in two periods. Like it was it's it, it's the, the the talent difference between these two teams was very evident all night. Uh, and the the shots on goal number being so low for the Blackhawks wasn't necessarily a uh, indication that you know they were not just getting shots up. The Kings were doing a great job of getting in shooting lanes and, and blocking shots tonight. So credit to them for suppressing the Blackhawks as much yeah, as they did. But credit to the Blackhawks uh, going into overtime. I think they had what like fourteen shots on goal, 13. four goals, thirteen. Yeah, so only. 27 shot attempts according to the uh, event summary. Yeah. Not so half so half of them were blocked. Yeah. Or went or wide. Missed. Yeah. Uh let's see they were outshot 14-4 in the first period, 11-3 in the second period. And despite scoring three goals in the third, they were still outshot 10 to 6. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. A, a bummer way to lose, but you know, a lot of people are are blaming Soderbloom for that goal. That's a that's a great shot. Yeah, and uh, you know, hey, uh, Kevin Krachinski, you got to do something there. One he didn't one, even have the stick in the shooting lane. One final teaching moment to end the season. Got to do something there, dude. He's got his stick facing the other way to take away a pass. He ain't passing there, dude. It's overtime. Yeah, you got to play more aggressive on that. It's three on three. That's your guy. Make sure he doesn't shoot. If he wants to pass backwards, whoever he's passing to is hopefully covered by either Connor Bedard or Philip Kershep. Yeah. You can't let him shoot there. He's got to. You just can't. He's got to close down the gap on on Kempe and try and force him to the outside at that point. And And that game's not in overtime without... Robert Soderblom's terrific first period. Yeah, he was great. He was really first. good tonight. Yeah, really good tonight. Uh, it's hard to blame. Yeah, it's just the the one goal that went between his legs. That wasn't a great goal. Yeah. Was that the second goal? That was the, the first the first one. That kind of trickled in. One. Yeah, just want to hit him in the nuts. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, he had a better game. Now uh, people are saying that the backup goaltending situation needs to be addressed for next season. Yep. I don't disagree with that. We've, we we've discussed yes, we've discussed that a lot. We'll discuss it some more. I think you definitely need to upgrade that position. But tonight's loss is not on Arvid Soderblom, despite five goals going yeah. in. It could have been... On paper, it'll look worse than it, it actually they was. It could have easily been eight or nine goals. Uh, yeah. But we had another uh, super chat here. Uh, Gaming chat. for Veterans. That's He had one in the uh, uh, watch-along as well. Uh, we got nine ninety nine. This is the lowest. We'll be in the standings. The rise starts now. Let's go. Only up from here. Thanks for entertaining us nice. this season, guys. Ready for the Calder ceremony and <laughs> the draft. Yeah, so are we. Hopefully we'll be yeah. there for those. Hopefully, That's uh, the plan. Two Calder ceremonies. Yes. This year and next With year. The cup and the trophy. Oh, yeah. Oh, there you, there you go. go. Yeah. yeah. That too. Calder Cup playoffs start uh, this weekend. Yeah, and Lucas Reichel's going to be there, and boy, what a sweet goal what for him. Goal. And I just, you know, as we're looking for, like, the last game, like, things we want to see, mm. like, boy, it'd be cool to see Bedard get, a, like, a multi-point game or Nazar score. Uh, but, man, for Reichel to score, and not just score, but score the way he scored where he does everything they want him to do. He wins the puck in the defensive zone, Plays flips it through three L.A. Kings, beats yeah. him with the speed, Uses his skill to score, like, just outstanding. Yeah. And I really hope that, that Lucas Reichel takes that and holds on to that the entire offseason. And when he's back down in Rockford and saying, all right, do more. Of I that. feel like I'm back. <laughs> I feel yeah. I feel like my old self again. I've proven that I can do it. I've proven I've had skill against a good team. Yeah. And I got rewarded. And, boy, it's uh, it was really good to see him score that goal. Yeah, I'm I'm sure that's a, a big boost to uh, to his confidence to end the year. And when he came back from Rockford um, towards the end of the season here, he was doing a lot of those things that he wasn't when he was uh, here for the majority of the season. He was playing more aggressively, playing more, um, you know, doing all, all the all the things that away from the puck make you a difference maker. And, and I think that is 
being rewarded here in the last in the last game with a goal like that where he makes the aggressive play to intercept the pass. He makes the aggressive play to 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 uh, charge the puck through the neutral zone down the middle. Didn't look to go outside anywhere. He said, "No, I'm going sh- north south straight to the net." Beat two guys and and made a great move. Like that that has got to feel incredible for him and and he's going to get an opportunity to play in in the postseason with Rockford playing some some high pressure meaningful games uh and be a go-to guy in that atmosphere um as much as maybe you know if if this season had gone to uh to his expectations at the beginning of the year he wouldn't be playing you know AHL playoff games but given where he's at I'm sure that's going to be an opportunity for some confidence boosting to be like, all right, you know, be 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 the go-to guy in those situations, um, and hopefully be able to to step up and and produce for the uh, for the Ice Hogs. Are we ready to announce our four star uh, candidates? All right, your I three stars the of the game: yeah. uh, Adrian Kempe with the overtime winner, Philip Deneau, who will haunt the Blackhawks until the day he dies, hey, 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 and future so Hawk Victor sure Arvidsson is your number one star. So here are our nominees for the final four-star of the game. Ryan Donato with a goal and an assist. He was plus one, had two shots, uh, 10.53 of ice time. By the way, goal was great. That assist that he basically makes falling down, gets it to Korczynski. Yeah, he had a really good, uh, game. really good game for Donato. Lucas Reichel, who we've been talking about, with a goal, 11.08 of ice time and one shot on goal. And Tyler Johnson with a goal, excuse me, two shots and 10.07 of ice time, so get your votes in. We'll reveal the winner at the end, as well as the winner of who's not your hawk. Because tonight <laughs> we try to predict who would have the worst game. Uh, and, sometimes uh, the easiest you'll never guess. answer is the obvious answer. <laughs> yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So get your votes in on the YouTube for four star of the game, and uh, we'll let you know who won. But yeah, I just uh, you know we're gonna get to Connor's corner later too, and it has been a pretty slow end of the you know last handful of games for Connor Bedard. Uh minus three in this one, including the overtime winner, so fine. Twenty one oh four. Only one shot on goal for him. And this is the first time we've seen him like where he's not really generating much. I think the kid's out of gas. It's yeah. totally yeah. understandable. Not only considering the grind of a season, the grind from recovering from an injury, all the media attention, all the spotlight, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I know it looks like he's going to play for the Worlds, and you're going to have to, you'd have to put him in a straight jacket for him to not. Um, but I hope after that, he does take a little bit of time to just take a breath. Sure, he will. And relax and stay out of the, just stay off your skates, put your stick down, just even if it's for a week. I, I was going to yeah. say, give him 36 hours. Yeah, yeah, right. Like, just, yeah. Ain't gonna, they ain't going to happen for a Let week. Let him sleep in once. The only time that he is not going to be on the ice is that long flight to Czechia and back. Yeah, <laughs> that's really. about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so maybe if they get the pilot to take the long way around to get him off the ice. Um, Go the opposite direction. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's out of gas. It's, it's pretty obvious. Luke Richardson even was asked that. and. Didn't come out and say it, but he, he kind of was like, "Well, Basically, we all we all tired, yeah. so of course he's tired." But um, that could be fun, man. That World Championships could have Bedard and Crosby on the same line potentially. Well, yeah. I also think too, and I, there's a lot of people saying, "Don't let him go to the Worlds." Like he's not going to be used the same way no, he's, he's used he's here. Be like a fourth liner, he'll there. be a specialist. They'll use yeah, him on yeah, the power play. Be, he'll like. Yeah, he's gonna it's play gonna be eleven okay. minutes. Like, yeah, and it's a different right. style down, of hockey down the lineup. Yeah, and it's, with it being in in, uh, well, is it always in Europe? You yeah, it is. Okay, so because it's wider it's, ice. You know. It's always in Europe because you can't do it in North America because the Stanley Cup playoffs, playoffs are going that on. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah, I I I think it'll be just fine for him to to go there and and yeah, he's gonna go and play a what at most eight to ten games. Um, where he doesn't have to shoulder the entire load of being the the offensive generator and being the focal point of the team, like he can be a he could be a complimentary player to some of these guys that uh, are going to be a, be playing with Canada. And um, it's I mean it's 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 good uh, experience for him. I honestly I I think that'll be a good experience for him to be in that role to not have to be the be all end all of of a team which he did for. You know, however yeah. many games he played this year, 67, 67. I think. Yeah. 
68, 67, something like that. Yeah. Missed so, 14, so he's 60. Yeah, almost eight. a nice amount of, of, of games. Um, but yeah, I think it'll be a, a little bit of a breath of fresh air probably for him to to not have to, uh, you know, be the go-to guy for a few games. Well, the Hawks are out. The season's over, but the playoffs are beginning on Saturday. We've got your bracket. We'll share that with you a little bit later. Uh, but, hey, this is the best time of year to – Download that Prize Picks app and start making some picks yep. on some playoff hockey. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They're the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. So, like, instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you just pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. For instance, Connor Bedard, shots on goal, two and a half, more, less. That's how you play it. That's it. It's that simple. You stack picks. The winnings get bigger and bigger and bigger. It's a lot of fun. Get in on the playoff action and win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you add, as you and the world's best players, sorry, it's late, take the game to a new level during basketball's postseason. Those playoffs begin April 20th. The playing round is April 16th, 17th, and 19th. That's Bulls. today. Bulls. Bulls. When do they play again? Soon. They well, play the Heat tomorrow? Later, later tonight. Friday. Later Friday? this yeah. Friday. The playing today. scenario, I had no idea what it was, and then I read it. I was like, that's actually kind of cool. Yeah, see? Like the, now uh, you want to expand the No, playoffs. I don't. I still no, don't, yeah. but that's kind of cool. <laughs> We're like, <laughs> the winner of the 7-8 matchup Is automatically it? in, but the yes. loser gets to play the winner of the 9-10. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it like, is cool. It is. Yeah. It's a it's, good it's, little it's, it's, system. It's, it's interesting. Yes, I Give still don't want that for, that, for yeah. the NHL though. Well, we have loved playing Prize Picks all year. Uh, we basically do it every game, and uh, we are confident you'll love it too. So here's what you need to do: go to PrizePicks.com/chgo and use that code chgo for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. That's PrizePicks.com/chgo and use code chgo. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Mm-hmm. Hey, and if you win a truckload of money mm. over at Prize Picks, and you want to get yourself a brand new vehicle, maybe okay. make a nice down payment yeah. after cashing in some serious playoff money, well, you need to join. Go visit our partner Ray Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Cram Cram and Fox Lake. It's, they are celebrating the Jeep celebration event all month long, and you know what that means? What's well, I'll mean? tell you, you're going to be able to rave about their savings on a wide selection of inventory for a limited time. You can lease a brand new 2024 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo Altitude mm. for $439 a month for just 39 months. If that Jeep Grand Cherokee isn't big enough for you, if size actually does matter in your more world, s- check space. out the third row and lease a new 2024 Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited L for four seventy nine a month for thirty nine months. That is an unlimited W at that price. I'll <laughs> tell you that, my friends. At Ray Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram. Ram. Ram breath Ram. You'll be able to shop one of Chicagoland's largest inventories and drive home with more money in your pocket than you'd expect. Thanks to Ray's price promise. Don't miss out. Shop great deals all month long and save big because Ray Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram Ram, Ram, Ram. makes buying. A vehicle more affordable than ever, and that's not all. Just for listening and being our friend here at CHGO, you can get a free oil change free. when you mention CHGO at the service center or mention CHGO when you book online at Ray CDJR slash service. But you have to schedule before April 30th. So if you're in the new market, then you have to check out the team, the new vehicle market. Then uh, you need to check out the team at Ray Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram Ram Ram. Ram. Because they're the only team we recommend. Visit them today on Route 12 in Fox Lake or at RayCDJR.com. Serving the community since 1963. Holy shit, I need to go to bed. Yeah, it's pretty late. <laughs> I knew Ray. It's pretty late. No, that's Chevy. Yes. Is that Chevy? Yes. I thought, yeah. it, I thought it was Ray. It's not a Ray. No, that is a Crumb yeah, stuff. I, I have also made that mistake. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, that's, only that's Chevys find Chevy new roads. Yeah. That's the Chevy slogan, not the Ray slogan. Whatever. Right, don't so find we got some, um, Stay on the roads, you know. Stay on the road. Right don't the go race. chasing Stay waterfalls. A <laughs> couple more super somewhere. chats to get to. Uh, TD Burns. That's another Tribe Called Quest. Song. Uh, says, <laughs> appreciate <laughs> the hell out of you guys. Thanks for keeping us entertained and informed during this hopefully last 
whale shit of a tanking season. <laughs> Fair enough. And uh, Paul Spicconi, I hope I said that right, says, thanks for another great season of coverage, fellas. I've had to watch most of the games on DVR the last couple months, so I missed you live a ton, but I watch everything and enjoy what you do. Awesome. Go CHGO. Thank, Thank you, Paul. You. We appreciate Thank that. Thank you. Awesome. To all of you. All well, y'all. the good news is... It's over. Uh, well, that, uh, but <laughs> we're not. We're going to still be yeah. here five, five days a week, days all a week. off season long. Five days off. And uh, Monday nights, we're going to be at the barn. They're in a the chat, too. We saw them earlier. Yep. Uh, bar. The barn, hockey bar over there on Ogden in between uh, Monroe and uh, Adams there, right? That's where it is, right in the shadow of the United mm-hmm. Center. Mm-hmm. You can't miss it. It's got all the flags outside. Got all the hockey stuff. You'll see the Zamboni through the window. We're going to be there Monday night to watch the Stanley Cup playoffs. We're just going to be hanging out, yep. probably drinking some Coors Light, eating some pizza. Going to get the poutine machine get fired that up. Yeah, I'm, machine I'm ready. ready. I'm bringing a whole roll of quarters for the poutine machine. Uh, and we're just going to watch <laughs> hockey. Come out and join us. Yeah. We'll be there around 6 o'clock, and we're just going to have a couple tables set aside. Yeah. Well, so. here's the schedule, by the way, for Monday. Uh, L.A. versus Edmonton, 7 p.m. What? Yeah. And That's Vegas versus Dallas, 8.30. Those are local times. Got to be. Right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the two it's 8 p.m. Games? Mountain is the time for L.A. versus Edmonton. Those are the two late games. And 8.30 Central. What are the two are Eastern those, games? There's gotta well, be two. all the Eastern uh-huh. games are being played on Saturday and Sunday. There are no Eastern games. Those are the two games on Monday. Well, we got gypped. We only got two out Can't of the four that. that we wanted. Sorry. So, we got, so it's a 7 <laughs> p.m. Central that. start for... L.A. and Edmonton? I'm looking right now. Let's see. Or is Oh, wait, no. They got... There's got to be... Yeah, no. I'm yeah. sorry. They got... Whoever tweeted this matchup screwed it up. It's, there's got to be... It was John games. Shannon who screwed it up, for the record. Uh, John Shannon. That's why he's not a GM anymore. It is uh, Maple Leafs Bruins at 6. Uh, That'll be game two. Uh-huh. Then uh-huh. we have Islanders Hurricane 6.30. Game two. Mm-hmm. Golden Knight Stars at 8.30. And Kings and Oilers right. at nine. Okay. So thank All you, right. John Shannon, for the false information. You Maple jerk. Leaf Bruins. Nice. Game two. Cool. Okay, I'm wrong. John Shannon said series starts. So he was tweeting oh, that geez. series. He was tweeting oh, game yeah, one of every series. Get it right. Oh, my God. Jeez. What a confusing thing Come to on. do with John Shannon. All right. Ass. Well, bottom line is there will be playoff four hockey games. played. Four games. Check us out at the uh, the Hockey Barn. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be awesome. It's such a cool yeah. place. Uh, I have the bubble hockey machine, I hope, will be going. I hope it's working. It'll be dominating. They have a million TVs, and they'll all have hockey on. So yes. So come, come see us. Come uh, see the games with us. Just hang out. We'll be there. We're looking forward to hopefully. And just, you know, if you got to work and all that stuff, you know, just. Uh, just come by. If you can't make it till 8 o'clock. Yeah. Come and watch the late games with us. Yeah. No ticket needed. Just show up. Yeah. It's going to be an awesome time. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to just, like, taking a deep breath. But I'm telling you, like, after a week, I'm going to be itching for the yeah. Hawks to come back because yeah. it's been our life for the last, well, years. We, when but you, especially, if, like, from the day they won the draft lottery last year till now has been chaotic. It's been a whirlwind. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, I mean, as, as, as much uh, losing as we've endured this year – um, there have been a lot of a uh, lot of fun times, on and off the ice, and uh, it's it, the the Connor Bedard experience this year. Um, unfortunately, had to uh, be put on pause for a couple of games due to injury, but it 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 lived up to uh, to the expectations. I would say. I I think you know what he did this year, what he provided this team. Um, what he did on the ice, what he did off the ice, it was it was kind of all what we uh, what we expected when when he was picked first overall, and um, I, he was he was the top uh, top rookie in my eyes in, in in the league to do what he did on this team with this supporting cast as an 18 year old stepping onto the uh, NHL ice uh, was was special, and and on top of that, you had the the breakout season from Philip Kershev. Breakout season from Alex Vlasic. Peter Mrazek had a really good yeah. year. There's um, a lot of positives. A lot of, lot, of good, lot of good things to take away from a, a season in which you finished uh, second worst in the league. Yeah. I, 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 like, I think 
like we've talked about a lot of this year, like, yeah, you could obsess over the results and where they are in the standings and night after night live and die with wins and losses. But for the most part, the things that matter, the arrow is pointed up. Yeah. The players that matter, the arrow is pointed up. And, again, I, I, I don't want to make too much of that Reichel goal, but it's just – I feel like for a guy who's been through such a tough year to experience that is good. Mm -hmm. And I think, quite frankly, like for Connor Bedard to experience a little bit of frustration for the first time in his career is probably good in the long term, right? Like yeah. Learn yeah. how to fight through that. Learn how to – now he's learned what he needs to get better at and what he needs to work on in the offseason. And trust us, he is going to work his ass off this offseason. Yeah. And Kevin Korczynski, kind of the same deal. Like, all right, I had no choice. I had to play an entire season aside from the games he missed because of uh, his father passing away. Mm -hmm. And now he knows what he needs to do to get to that next level. And I don't know. I, 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 I've, after 82 games at 12.35 a.m., I feel very optimistic. Yeah. And even if they don't get the number one pick or the number two pick, if, if it happens to be four, which is the lowest it can go, you're still going to get a damn good player there. Yep. And you got another one later with Tampa – and you're loaded up with draft picks for the next couple of years. It's just, I don't know, I, I, as, as frustrating as tonight was, you should be excited and encouraged about what's coming. Yep. I, I, there's there's a lot of positives moving forward. And as we you know talked about during the watch along, it doesn't necessarily seem like uh, the door is closed that this team is going to feature a lot of young players next year. Yeah. And I, I think that that would be – really exciting um it's it, we're, we're we're now a full season progressed further into the uh the re rebuilding plans by kyle davidson and i think so far the things that matter in the rebuilding plan have have gone the way that i think uh this organization needed them to go so now you you go into the draft you go into the uh free agency period this summer um and you see what you see what uh davidson has planned i i, I think it's it could go a multitude of ways in in free agency but i feel like if they don't go with adding any kind of marquee names or even those second tier names i wouldn't take that necessarily from from a fan perspective i wouldn't take that as like a he didn't do anything um standpoint He's, if they go that route, it's probably because they're going to have Nazar and Slager and maybe Colton Doc uh, and, and so on and so forth move up, move, graduate up to being NHL players. It might mean Ethan Del Mastro is a full-time NHL player next year. It might mean Wyatt Kaiser is going to have the opportunity to move up. Um, and I think that that's, that would be really exciting. So uh, it's... Things are going in the right direction from the bird's eye view of what this organization is trying to accomplish. Well, we've got some post-game quotes rolling. It's from uh, CH Zero's very own Nick Foligno. This quote courtesy of uh, Ben Pope. Quote, we are a team that needs to make some changes. This isn't good enough. This can't be good enough. This has to change drastically over the summer. You battle all year long with the group, and you care a lot about every individual. But the reality is when you don't win – Changes are inevitable, and we understand the business side of it. We even talked about it. This might be the last time we play together, all of us, forever. We can't go through this again, and I certainly won't allow it. Either the mindset changes from the group or personnel changes. Okay. Damn. I think there... There's... Yeah. I, go ahead. I, th <laughs> I think thing. from <laughs> reading, reading between the lines of some things that, that Nick has said all year... Um, in the media at large and uh, to us on our on on our shows, um, I think there have been, I, and I don't think this is really breaking too much news, but there have definitely been some passengers on this team for a long stretch of this season, uh, and I don't know if there's been any locker room frictions or anything like that. But I think from what Felino has said a few times, uh, I think he knows the guys that are, that have bought in or that were bought in this season and will be around. And I think he's 
probably been able to identify the guys that weren't and that won't won't be around. And I think there's a couple things to keep in mind here. I think that Nick Foligno has Kyle Davidson's ear. Yeah. And I think vice versa. He definitely has Kyle Davidson's boss's ear. Yeah, and I don't think that Nick Foligno resigns here without a conversation about, okay, I'll commit to you for more, but I need to know I'm not doing this again next year. Yep. And I, and I, and again, There's a standard that needs to be set. Yeah. And he, you're right. Like he, I was going <laughs> to, we we're on the same page. Like there have been hints here and there sprinkled in. And when you go through the roster, you're like, all right, you don't want to start naming who cares and who doesn't. That's a very slippery slope, but he knows. And if he knows, then Richardson knows and Davidson knows. And like, it's, Mm-hmm. There's going to be changes. Who who have been the guys that have missed the last couple of games? Colin yeah. Blackwell, Taylor Radish. I mean, he had to start thir- uh, an extra forward tonight. And Taylor Radish was for- one of them. And Taylor Radish wasn't one of them. It was Blackwell who got back in. That's the only reason he got back in. Yep. Uh, Colin Blackwell has lost his roster spot to make room for Frank Nazar. Very symbolic. Uh, yeah. I think it's time to upgrade and go from not just, hey, he's a really good locker room guy and he tries hard. I'd rather Great. have a guy that actually plays good. You can be both. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know what, you can you can be a, a, a wee, bit, wee bit of a prick if you score 30. I'm okay with that too. Sure. Like, it's time. <laughs> good locker rooms can, can to overcome that. To raise the bar. Uh, it's time to... Get the standard raised here. Um, Nick knows who he's talking about, and Kyle Davidson knows who he's talking about. Oh, yeah. And uh, we'll know who he's talking about here when, you know, guys are told, thanks for your time, Mm -hmm. uh, but we're not bringing him back. So um, it's going to be an interesting offseason. I know we've got young guys on the way. But you still need some veterans here, some talented veterans, uh, because you know, again, you don't want you don't necessarily want to block these young guys, but you also don't want to say, "Hey, it's your spot, it's yours guaranteed," and then have a kid struggle like we saw with Lucas Reichel this year. Right, right. Uh, you you need you need some more Com- competition. Is is good. You need some more talent here. Yeah. You definitely do. It's been a problem all season. A lot of that was magnified with all the injuries. We've talked about that all season long. Magnified. But uh, magnified. Um, <laughs> there are definitely some guys <laughs> here that I will be glad. <laughs> Get the catapult loaded up. <laughs> the, there are a lot of guys. There are some guys here that I'm glad played their last game as Blackhawks tonight. <laughs> and, uh, hey, you know what? Some of these guys were put in tough situations, brought in here. Literally, uh, hey, wait, you're playing in Rosemont tonight. Can you come here? All right, you're on waivers. Cool. Yeah. You're now on our team. Um, but it's time to raise the standard. Uh, PP want- Nibbler says Bedard and Kane time, baby. I disagree with that, but I just want to say PP Nibbler on the show. PP Nibbler, what are you, four? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Ah, uh, well. Is that making your? Is that a late addition to your top fifteen <laughs> moments of the season? I do that that night, I got to say peepee nibbler on this thing on, on uh, the show. Oh, oh that's, that's fantastic! I love that. All right, I'm going to make this promise for next season. Okay. I'm going to start taking notes of like moments like this, so at the end of the year, we can make a best of episode yes. of all of yes, our yes. best jokes and funny moments. Have Sarah McLaughlin playing underneath it. And I we'll play it at you. the end of our final post game. Like it'll be our one shining moment, but it'll be just us yeah, being complete it. dorks. Sure. Yeah, love <laughs> it. All right. That's my that's, that's my guess. Uh that's my promise for next season as I'll start making mental notes of or actual notes of uh these fun moments. That's awesome. I like that idea. Well, we're in the break zone. We as are a sign in the gates. Does that mean we get the break stuff? Who's uh who's got dirty clothes? Boom, if we, boom. If we did uh, just one of them days, if we did break stuff, we might have to clean it up. Might get a little messy out here. If we wanted to clean up our clothes, we need to go to our friends at CD One Price Cleaners. 
one of the best places, if not the best place, to take all of your dry cleaning needs and get them taken care of. Customers can save over 30% on their dry cleaning bill by switching to CD1 price cleaners. <clears throat> Other cleaners charge a different price for every garment type, plus they upcharge you and may make you pay a different price each time you visit. But at CD1 price cleaners, they charge one low price for any garment, huh. even sports jerseys, Clever. the same one low price. And they have a very quick turnaround on their process. CD1 price cleaners can have your order ready the same day or the next day where other cleaners take sometimes two to four days to have your garments clean and ready. And they'll give you text alerts to have you come pick up your order when it's ready. It's very 21st century of them. And they have a wide variety of services, not just dry cleaning, but they'll also uh, do some washing and folding of your laundry. They'll clean blankets and comforters. They can do tailoring and alterations. They can clean your leather goods and your area rugs. So visit chgo.cd1one.com. Uh, the link is also in the description. Once you're there, you can pick from an in-store coupon or an online pickup and delivery coupon option. Again, that's chgo.cd1one.com. And if you just love visiting CD1 Price Cleaners, and why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Uh, Keep staining your clothes with bacon from Charlie the Bacon Guy. Mm, bacon Get grease. Get those bacon grease stains done. on give there. Them a, done. Give yeah. them a challenge. <laughs> That's exactly right. And by the way, a lot of people asking for tank spins. They must not have been here nah. for the uh, watch along. Yes. If nope. we win this Charlie the Bacon Guy order code way. challenge, you'll we will have a tank spin. Get, the otherwise, it's the we're only not way. It. Yeah, we're not doing it otherwise. So if you want tank spins, you got to order bacon from Charlie. How do you do that? Super easy. CharlieTheBaconGuy.com. Use that code CHGO Hawks. You're going to save 10%. But, Jay, who's Charlie the Bacon Guy? Well, aside from being a guy who sends you inappropriate links while you're at work, he also <laughs> makes craft bacon. He definitely and does. And bacon that. jams yes. in over 35 really different flavors. They're all naturally cured and preservative free, vacuum sealed, and they freeze perfectly. So, order pounds and pounds and pounds of bacon. Get yourself one of those portable chest freezers. Just oh, to maintain yeah. all your bacon. A bacon exclusive freezer. You'll be good for the whole year, and we will win Put it right next the to challenge. the challenge. machine. Exactly right. Here's what you need to do. All right? You go to charliethebaconguy.com. You peruse the offerings on the website. You get your order in. You use that code CHGOHawks, and you save 10% on your order. Here are some of the bacon flavors. Ranch, rosemary, vanilla bourbon, mm. maple espresso, Cajun, jardinere, and the brand new Canadian bacon, or as they call it in Canada, bacon. Back bacon. The bacon jam flavors Damn. are original bourbon and the cherry jalapeno. Let me tell you guys, I brought the cherry jalapeno to a party and left it out with some Frito scoops. You know, it was like Ooh. big Fritos. Mm, yeah. Good. It was like a cartoon. Like that little tub of bacon jam was like spinning like a top because people <laughs> ate it so fast. It was crazy. It was gone in a heart. As soon as someone took a bite, People saw, oh, yeah. like, the eyes light up, and then they flooded the mm -hmm. bacon jam, and it was gone in a heartbeat. Get your own at charliethebaconguy.com, and again, use our code CHGOHawks, and you're going to save 10%. You can pick it up from Charlie in Woodridge. That's the easiest way. He can deliver it to you, meet you halfway, or even ship it. He makes the bacon, so you can bring it home one more time. charliethebaconguy.com. Use that code CHGOHawks. And you'll save 10%. And if we beat the other CHGO shows, you get tank spins. Yes. And I did one secretly today. And I'm not going <laughs> to reveal what happened. And by the way, you said it's the easiest way is to, to go to Woodridge. I think the easiest way is for him to deliver it to my house. That's just for me. Well, easiest for me, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and also, shout out to Charlie for uh, in the watch along he did when it was 4 3 Hawks. He mentioned, hey, the King's money line is plus whatever it was, and I, I got it at plus 473, and that was nice. Thank you, Charlie. Credit to you and Charlie. Credit to Charlie. Yeah. Yes. Did he send you a link, too? Or he just, did not. Just the, just uh, he the might line. have, but I don't look at Charlie's right. links. Yeah. Yes. We've all learned that lesson. Well, yeah. tonight's loss wasn't the end of the world because with the King's win... They actually jumped over the Tampa Bay Lightning in the overall Beep. standings. Oh. So if as long as the Tampa Bay Lightning don't make the conference finals or Stanley Cup final, it's back to number 19, baby. Hey, back to back there years. You go. Coming into the night, it was 20th. 
So it's 19th again. As long as Tampa loses in the first two rounds, if they make the conference finals, it will be it one re- of the last re-jumbled. four yep. picks of the dra- of the first round. So uh, All right. I, I, I don't I, I I don't want I wouldn't want to play Tampa in the playoffs, but no. I don't think in this year's Eastern Conference they have what it takes to get Their to the conference final. Opening round is against Florida. Yeah. And if they do get past Florida, they face the winner of Boston, Tampa, or Toronto. Yeah, so, so Boston. That's tough. Um, Celebrating <laughs> again, Let's go. I'm okay. I, don't I think, think again. I don't think again. Is ahead of 19. I think you I, trade up. I think Calgary probably a top takes four. Them. A top four pick and uh, 19th overall. So long as Tampa doesn't uh, advance, not bad. Not bad. First round options. Three second round picks too. You can get creative. 19 and a second to move up, maybe? Yeah, yep. Who knows? I'm done with that. Who knows? By the way, a lot of people forgetting a rule about... Yeah, uh, lots of people owe dollars. Lots yeah. of dollars being owed. Lots of dollars. The mere mention of bringing Patrick Kane back is a dollar per mention. We're going to get some Salernos girls. on Yeah, can uh, I just... Stop it. I'm going to close the it's computer not, real It's quick. not happening. Well, I know just you're working stop. on something, but I... Just, like, just, what do we want? Stop. Guys, <laughs> Patrick Kane is not coming back. It's not happening it's not happening stop it stop doing this to yourselves because all you're gonna do is get mad when it doesn't happen move on it's okay for players that had great success here to go and have success elsewhere it's not happening just move on because now it's just sad he has said kyle davidson unequivocally that we are moving on from Patrick Kane. Said, hey, great. We love him. His legacy will never be beaten here. He came back. He had his flowers. He beat the Hawks in overtime. Everything was storybook for Patrick Kane. We all love Patrick Kane. He did great things here. But let's move on. He wants to win let's a stand. On. And look, I, people are saying, like, do it to make me mad. If they bring him back, I'm not going to be mad. But it's every damn day. Day. It's gonna I had a guy today say bring season. Taves and Kane back. Why? To do what? Taves may not play hockey ever again. I just let alone play again in Chicago. It's so like you can bring guys back that didn't play here before. You can you can sign other players. Yeah, uh, like uh, you're allowed uh, to do other, that. Other players are good at hockey. Yes, there's other yeah. good players mm-hmm. like, that aren't uh, coming off of surgeries at 35 years old. You know. And would just, it be fun to watch Connor Bedard and Patrick Kane play together? Yes, it would. If you're concerned about uh, Patrick Kane or Connor Bedard's plus minus, that's not going to help. It's not no, gonna get better. it is not. Oh. It's not going to help. Yes. It's not. It's uh, yeah. It's not going to no, happen, guys, kids. You're 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 setting yourself up for disappointment. Major disappointment. Major disappointment. Um, Thank you. So uh, yeah, it uh, it's been like much that that whole I think probably because of yesterday. Is he referred to the Red Wings in the past tense? Right. He is why people are very Stanley excited Cup. about it's it. Not, and it's not past tense to, to come back to Chicago. It's past tense to be like, well, I put my eggs in the basket that this team was ready to win a cup and had the space to put me on their roster and had guys that I'm familiar with yep. and comfortable playing with, and it didn't work out. I don't – he's not going to – I would imagine he is furious the way that he – battled back from injury, came back, had the season he did, and is not playing. He's playing the same amount of postseason games as Taylor Radish is. Yeah. I bet yeah. that burns his ass. His, his postseason started before Taylor Radish did. Sure. Yes. So, I, I'm, so to come back to Chicago uh, and not make the playoffs again next year, why would he sign up for that? Yeah. Again, it takes two sides to want to do the same thing. In order for it to happen, and right now neither side wants that. He if doesn't want to come back here. If he's he'll pissed, come back here yeah. for his one day contract, so yes. he could have the panel right. in the atrium, and they could re- he could retire as a Blackhawk, and then they'll retire his number just like Marion Hosa. They'll do the same thing for that. He's a Blackhawk for life. Yeah. No matter where he plays, if he wins another cup yeah. with somebody else, it doesn't erase what he did here. He's going down as the greatest American-born hockey player of all time with all the important things happening of that great career in a Blackhawks uniform. Mm -hmm. It's a new era. It's time to just accept it. 
Yeah. Accept it. We and this, have this concept in, in, in Corey Trevor Sports says Kane made it pretty clear he wanted to hear from the Hawks when they won the draft for Bedard. I don't remember I seeing that at all. No, he. No. I don't know what that's. that's no. He, he, this he, is he revisionist not, history. He did not yeah. make that clear. If he's pissed, if he's talking about Detroit in the past tense because they're not good enough to for him to win with, he's not coming back here. Yeah. To accomplish Get, what? Put all of this energy into getting excited about Frank Nazar. Right. And Oliver Moore and Ethan Del Mastro and all these young guys that are coming in that are going to be the new era of Blackhawks hockey here and that are going to be the next group of guys to come through and have a long contention window and have playoff success and, and sell out the UC again. Like, you don't have to just go back to the well of the past right to to have your 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 fun and your you know your good memories and stuff let those be your good memories and we can all move on to make new memories make new have new exciting things happen totally agree unless of course there's a cure for skin disease and we will bring back marion hosa asap okay yep. um last time we're going to mention patrick kane tonight 888 super chat from tanvers that's got to be Kane. Okay. That's got to be Kane. You got to do it in the Vince McMahon job. voice. You nailed it, man. That's you nailed a, it. All right, we're going to hear from... I'll, I'll allow the WWE references. All right, fair enough. Uh, we're going to hear from Luke Richardson here in a moment, but here is the playoff picture. It is established. Uh, Dallas and Vegas. Mm. Winnipeg and Colorado. Mm. Vancouver and Nashville. Mm. Edmonton and L.A. That's the West. LA. The East, I lie. The East is Florida and Tampa. Mm. Boston, Toronto. Mm. Rangers and Caps. Mm. Hurricanes and Islanders. Mm. So we got four Mez and, th- <laughs> and four, yeah. And usually the Mez always turn into, well, at least one of them turns into a really good series. Yeah. The, uh, like the, uh, of those four Meh series, I think the Capitals are going to give the Rangers a better series than people think. I think yeah. Nashville's going to beat Vancouver. I'm picking that. Yeah, Nashville's going to upset oh, Vancouver. That's got upset all written all over it. Nashville has been playing playoff hockey for two and a half months. They've been winning Vancouver a lot. has not played a meaningful game in months. <laughs> yeah. It's got a lot like yeah. Boston. That's starting to sniff like Boston, Florida last year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's true. Nashville's been the best team in the league for the last two and a half months. Yeah, uh, they're, they're, they're playing hot at the right time. Yeah, I mean, maybe they'll maybe Andrew Burnett will buy a whole bunch of U2 tickets for him right before the playoffs and then just burn them and go, nope, just <laughs> kidding, you can't go <laughs> see him <Psych>. again. <laughs> By the way, we have 100 likes for a post-game show. Yeah, oh, thank you. Almost 1 in the morning. You Love guys that. are awesome. The best. Regardless if we have to. You know why that's because I put up the Kane like. How many viewers do we have right well now? Well over 100. Uh, we 100 have 161. Yeah. All right, if we get to 120 likes, I will reveal who won my tank spin. <laughs> and that's just as good as a tank spin. <laughs> Um, sure. But you know, you guys are are awesome. Uh, yes. Even when we have to scold you, you guys are still our favorites. <laughs> we're not. I, I it's know, not. We're about, not but it's not about scolding. I it's know. about like it's stop wasting your energy because you're gonna end up frustrated when he signs somewhere I'm else. Frustrated that like, we're still it, talking about. Damn it! Why didn't they bring him back? I'm frustrated we're still talking Just about it. Let it go. But and if he that. does come back, be happy and surprised. Uh, yeah, it's that. not look happening. Look they're, what they're, a life! Going, they're going up. What a thumbs um, up. This has also been a great chat because I've seen two things that. Made me smile. Uh, TB Diddlers. Yes. <laughs> and Larry Horse were both mentioned in our chat. Thanks to Pee Pee Nibbler. Um, <laughs> but anytime we get some Terry Boars uh, going on, it's a good night. Uh, we got Luke if you want him right Let's now. Let's do it. Let's or do Luke. Do it. All right. And if we get to our like ratio, which I'm now raising to 130. <laughs> Sorry, it was too, <laughs> keep too easy to get to 120. Keep moving the 130 and I'll Move do that goal post. 130 and I'll tell you the Maybe 130 happened. in the morning. All right, here is Luke Richardson post game, courtesy of your Chicago Blackhawks. You were going to end on such a positive note there. How, how tough is that to swallow? Yeah, you know, I'm proud of the guys in the third period. Uh, they really played well, and we, we talked about that um, going into the third period. So, uh, you know, we really got our legs moving and threw pucks at the net. Uh, you know, just unfortunate mistake. Uh, you know, Kershey just obviously not meaning to throw it over the glass. It just. Uh, uh, scooped on a stick and went over the over the glass, and they're they're good in the power play. So, uh, you know, uh, and once you get to overtime, anything can happen. And they got the puck first, and it was over quick. Isn't that emblematic of like those little things that happen to your team that make the difference between winning and losing? Yep. No, it's uh, you know they're 
there are moments that you know cost us uh, you know tonight's game at the end. But uh, I think the perseverance in, in the third period, we have to learn from both. We have to learn that we have the ability to to uh, you know come back in a game, and, and we, we have to learn how to uh, hold on to leads and uh, do all the little things to uh, preserve that and win on the road. Felina was saying that he feels like this kind of has to change next year and that the team is going to have to change and had some pretty you know, blunt words for that. Do you, do you feel that way kind of? Well, you have to learn from this. Otherwise, they're not lessons. They're just going to continue to happen. Um, you know, I think, yeah, he is right that we, we have to uh, turn things around and make sure that we win more than these than you lose. Over the course of 82 games, everybody has games where you uh, uh, you have a bit of a blunder at the end and, and you, you lose and, you, and then you hunker down and you learn from it and it doesn't happen again for a long time. And that's where we're going to be at next year. How do you like uh, the way Reichel finished this season? That yeah, was good. I thought he had a great speed, uh, obviously. And, and he, even in the third period, he was on top of them and turned some pucks around and, um, you know, into battles, sick battles. And, uh, you know, he was uh, way better. Uh, the message was he was way better coming back after he was working on his game and his confidence in Rockford. And he's got to continue that and go forward. When you see a burst like that, a finish like that, you just wonder, like, why isn't it always there? Yeah, uh, you know, and, and I think he, he does look for it. Um, I think there was one time, even in the third period, he got pucked by our bench, and we're all yelling to skate with it, and he, and he kind of not dumps it away, he just is trying to play, play it smart with the lead, but for, for me, playing it smart with a guy that, with that speed is using the speed all the time. Uh, and that's the message, and he knows it, and I think it's just him finding uh, the confidence to know that uh, he wants to start games assertive like that, and. So I, I really like that first period from him, and uh, I think he just needs to know that 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 that's something that he has to implement into his game, his personal game plan within our our system, uh, you know, every night. And if he can do that consistently, he'll be a an explosive player in this league. How was it, five defensemen juggling that? Uh, not bad. Uh, you know, I think uh, it's harder to juggle in 13 forwards than it is the five defensemen. So, uh, but you know, I, I think everybody contributed tonight and. Um, you know, I think the D's really managed their uh, uh, time on the ice well. I don't think there was too many, uh, uh, you know, got shifts caught out there extra long that we have had in the past. So that was uh, that was really crucial tonight for these guys to stay fresh uh, till the end. Unfortunately, we didn't need that juice in overtime, but I think we had it if, if we would have uh, got by that first shift in overtime. Did that impact the penalty kill? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, I think they're just a big, strong team, and they. They scored two goals really close to the net, uh, especially the first one, Byfield and Kopitar. They're hard to handle there. And I think uh, Seth was right there, and, and he had a seam pass to the back door. I think it was, um, that might have been more or someone that was over there that he was concerned about. So I think, you know what I mean, like the, that's, they just wait. They just wait you out. And uh, they scored uh, on us like that earlier in the year as well. And, and you know, I mean, they're good at it. And uh, that's, uh, you know, that's what really got, kind of got us in the end, you know, that tying goal. But uh, six on four uh, with a team like that, that's pretty hard to uh, stop at that point. Unfortunately, we put ourselves in that position. Poor Luke. He just had, had some dental work done, and it's yeah, taking some It's tough. To, yeah. It's tough. It's tough. Uh, there he is. And if you were watching on the YouTube, you probably got a little teaser that what we're going to hear from next. While Luke was speaking, uh, Nick Felino was fed in. And uh, if you've been here all show, you know he had some interesting things to say. Um, so let's hear from uh, CHGO's very own Nick Foligno. Uh, I don't know. I just wanted something to hang your hat on. But I, I was proud of the way we battled back and got back in the game. And, um, yeah, we uh, we got some work ahead of us in the soft season and into the next year. It's kind of a roller coaster. Maybe the first two periods weren't great and then great stretch. And then at the end, kind of let it go again. Yeah, I mean, it's just... That's a good team over there too, and I think we we just got away from our game a little bit, and they capitalized, and then you know we found our game again and, and took over the game. And obviously, we'd like to have found a way to, to finish the game, and, and um, you know that's it's a disappointing part of it. But um, you know it's it's 
Like you, it's just the way the season's kind of gone, and, and I know it encapsulates that. I know that you're asking, but it's just I, I'm looking for the positives and things that we can build off of, and that's why I think it's so disappointing. Is just that you know you want to feel good about yourself going into the off season, but then again, you know we are a team that's that needs to make some changes here. You know this isn't good enough. This can't be good enough. This this has to change drastically over the summer, and and we need to find a way to to you know as as individuals here that have been here come back and, and have a mindset of, of getting this thing turned around and um, you know I'm sure the, the management will look at bringing in people as well and you know that's out of our control it's just making sure we're, we're ready to go for the next season it's gonna be a long off season to think about there is going to be obviously change with the roster going into next year have you talked to guys that may or may not be that are kind of on the edge there yeah it's tough I mean everyone you care a lot about these guys you battle all year long with the group and you care a lot about every individual but the reality is when you don't win changes are, are, are inevitable and you know, that's we understand the business side of it, and you know we even talked about that. This might be the last time we play together, all of us, and forever. You know, so it's uh, you wanted to go out on the right note, and you know for the most part we played the right way. Um, but yeah, you'll miss you'll miss guys. But and in saying that, the business side of it, uh, we have to change. I want to change. I mean, we, I can't. We can't go through this again, and I, I certainly won't. And. Um, won't allow it so either the mindset changes from the group or personnel changes and that's just the way it is in the NHL it's a business and we need to we need to treat it as such as we're moving forward we're trying to become a winning team and um, sometimes those are those are hard things because you're going to see good people leave and um, that's why you you want to try and get winning as, as fast as possible for next season how do you bring about that change what needs to happen for the team to make these incremental changes yeah I, I think it's a mindset of, of understanding what it takes to win and the details that go into that and the structure that you have to play with um, but honestly it's it's too you know early to think about that right now we're obviously disappointed about the loss and uh, we'll have time to, to I'm sure wrap up in a couple days here and talk more about it as I digest the year but you know obviously right now you're emotional about losing and just the way the year's gone but uh, you know I'm, I'm, I'm also thankful that I got to play with this group and appreciative of the guys efforts and um, but we all know that we need to be better as, a, as a, an entire organization here and, and find a way to do that uh, quickly. So not as harsh uh, when you hear it post game as opposed to reading it, but still pointed. More, yeah, certainly well, pointed to, to to the point statements. And I think as we were discussing during the watch along and a little bit during the post game show, I think changes are coming. I think that the we're going to be as bad as possible thing is over. I think that was a little bit over this year. I think it's it really was, over next year. It's supposed to be. It was supposed to be better than this this year. Mm -hmm. uh, last year's team was, yes, do everything you can to get number one overall. Right. This year was not supposed to be about this, but the injuries, uh, the underperformance, it turned it into this. Uh, this year, uh, next season should be a more competitive team. Uh, the talent gap should be. Uh, lesson a little bit on a nightly basis. Yeah. Not saying they're going to be a playoff team. No, but they should not be in the running for first overall next season. At least no. they better not. I be. hope not. I would hope so. They hope, are. Something's I, gone and if, terribly wrong. And that would, that would be some time to start questioning. Is right. Richardson the guy? Maybe not uh, Davidson yet, but if we hear that he try to make some moves and missed out or, you know, or if he doesn't do anything and, and the team just turns out to be too young, that could be a problem too because we've said this to Nick before. Like, yeah, it's a rebuild. Yeah, everyone understands what this is, but you don't want these guys getting used to losing. Right. You don't want losing to become routine. You don't want it to be something that stops hurting. And that I think that's, that's a concern. If you have another year like this year uh, with these young players – I'm not worried about Bedard. Bedard is a fiery competitor, but like Korchinski and Vlasic, you don't want them to be like, well, I guess I'm just a losing player on a losing team now, mm -hmm. you know? So I think they need to do something to prevent that. And look, maybe they're still fifth worst or seventh worst or something like that. But I kind of look at this year's Coyotes as a team that was in it until about the All-Star break and then started falling off and, you know, for myriad reasons, but... I think the Hawks should be at least in the conversation until Christmas, New Year's. Yeah, I'd I'd, I'd like to get to that point of the uh, of the year and not be thinking about like, all right, who are they going to get in the top top five picks of the draft or any, anything like that. I'd like to be thinking about 
the potential for this team next season to play games that mean something, um, you know, beyond the all-star break. Uh, I think that would be, it's, it's a small improvement, but I don't think it's unattainable where this roster uh, could go. But yeah, yeah, I mean, if, if if we're talking about another top five pick uh, this time next year, then yeah, I think there's, there's some criticisms and questions to be, uh, to be levied. Yeah, at the beginning of the year, before the season started, I'm going to go back to that episode before Saturday to see uh, how we did on our what teams make the playoff predictions. Um, but I had said that like if everything goes right this season, maybe they get 70 points. Yeah, and that, that yeah, and that, and that, that's, that's that when we were like that was about a 10 point improvement, yeah. right? And that was like Hall is healthy, Reichel is good, and we get great, we get. Above average goaltending, which at least for when Peter Mrazek started, we did. Mm-hmm. Um, we also thought Arvid Soderblom was going to outplay Mrazek yeah. in, in this season. That was, woof, bad idea. Um, so, you know, what'd they finish with? 50? 50, 55, 56? They finished with. I think 56 is right. Yes, they finished. 56 now points. Now we're going to the playoff. Whatever. 52. 52. Two? No. Whatever. It it, it it was way off that 70 point because everything went wrong. You know, Lucas Reichel had to go back to Rockford. You had all the injuries. Um, Soderblom was a huge disappointment this season. So everything 50, went 52 wrong. Is right. 52. 52, all right. Oh, Jesus. Everything went completely wrong, and they finished with 52. So I don't think... Coming into next season, if you bring in a couple of veterans, you bring in uh, a veteran defenseman to, to play with Korchinski next season. So you're not relying on Connor Murphy to try and play, uh, you know, 75 games. If you bring in a couple forwards, a Max Domi, a Jake DeBrusque, a Jack Ross, those type of guys, mm-hmm. not Steven Stamkos. Not Sam Reinhardt, not Jake Gunsel. Well, yeah, I saw Tanver said uh, you got to bring an elite player on a short-term deal. Elite players don't oh, okay. want short-term <laughs> deals. That doesn't work. Like, elite <laughs> players take short-term deals to Sounds win good. Stanley Cups. Not <laughs> yeah, that's this not... type of team. If it was only that easy, but so I think ne- that this time again, you know, late September training camp start, we we could have that discussion of depending on who they bring in. Where seventy points is not a unrealistic expectation. Right now, had you not had all those injuries, had you not had the underperformance of Lucas Reichel and Arvid Soderblom, I think seventy points would have been right about mm-hmm. where they would have been. Yeah, at least sixty-eight, sixty-nine, nice points. Nice. I mean, and but that's a huge jump from last year. Yeah. Yep. Did they finish with fewer points this year than last year? Yes, they did. That's they had, they that's, had fifty-nine points last year, I believe. That's insane. Well, when they tried to finish with the least amount yeah. of points last year, and they finished with less in a year that they, but they actually had, tried to be better. But remember, you had you had McCabe, Domi, Kane, Taves. Larry. Like you had, yeah. you had good players for most of the season last year. Yeah. Um. So, th- you know, look like it ended horribly, and we have our document of holy shit, Jujar Kara's in a top power play. Mm-hmm. Um. With Mackenzie and whistle. Right, but it. Up until then, that was a not a horrible roster because a lot of those guys were brought in like simply to flip, right? Like let's add more assets and be ready for this draft. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, Sam Lafferty was there too last year. Windy City Blackhawks yeah. says, "What about really overpaid short term deals? Could that attract some guys?" Sure, that's yep. they're going to have to do that. I yeah. mean, if, that's if what they did to keep ca- Felino and Jason Dickinson right. yeah, around. If you're, if you're going for that kind of of deal, sure, you did that with Nick Felino this year. And you're doing it for the next two I years. Think Jake DeBrusque is a really interesting name in that realm because I feel like that's a guy who sort of is like, I don't know, probably because of opportunity has sort of fallen through the – he reminds me a lot of Dylan Strom. Well, there's a – Where yeah. you give him like a, yeah. a top six opportunity every night and he's just going to create – he's going to produce because he's got better players around him. Now he's not going to have Alex Ovechkin just right. burying his passes over and over again. But I don't know. that, that And that's the kind of guy that could say like, hey – 
you know what? Give me a two-year deal. Let me prove myself. Mm-hmm. And he's still got another, how old is he, 27? 27. 27. Yeah. yeah. So if you sign him till he's 29, his first 30. time hitting UFA. He's never been a UFA yeah. before. Yeah, but I don't know what the demand's going to be for him right now. Um, what was his year like? All right. This year, I think a lot of people compare him to Dylan Strom because remember, him and Strom were both having that same thing where they both wanted yeah. to get traded. People were like, yeah. well, let's just trade Dylan let's Strom for Jake him. DeBrusque. Let's yeah. just swap him out. Right. Uh, he had 80 games, 19 goals, 40 points. Not bad. Uh, last year was his best year. Everybody had their best year in Boston. Yeah, they sure did. In 64 games, he had 27 goals and 50 points. Okay. Uh, 21, 22, and 77 games, 25 goals, 42 points. He's had two 27 goal seasons. He's had one, so he's had uh, three seasons of at least 25 goals. His worst year was that year that he wanted out, but he wasn't getting a lot of playing time. Uh, five goals, 14 points in 41 games. Mm. But he's had at least 40 points a season since then. So 50 yeah. points is as high, but he's averages about 40, 42 points. But that's playing down in a lineup on a very deep team. Yeah, He yeah. comes here, he's top six. Right. The, the other thing with free agency, too, is they they could be opening up spots for, for these young guys to, to, to come in and play. But... Kaiser and Del Mastro and Nazar and Slager, they're all on their entry level deals. So you gotta spend some money. They're gonna have to get a free agent. Or or That's a good uh, point. Alex yeah. Vlasic needs a new contract. They're gonna have to give him some money too. Because you're so, losing Zaitsev's contract. You're, you're losing very, you're likely losing Zaitsev. You're losing Johnson's five million. Ty- Taylor uh, Tyler Johnson's yeah, five million. It. I'm on it. <laughs> Ra- uh, Radish is very likely coming off the books. Tenorti, that's a million coming off the books. Um, it's still so weird to have to scroll all the way to the bottom to find the Blackhawks. Then, Cap- so, right. and and I think they have one sal- uh, salary retention coming off, right? Is it is it Keith's? Uh, n- let's see. It's, isn't it Keith's uh, retirement? Uh, after this year, it is. Uh, your they, they have twenty. Yeah. Yeah, Keith's. Yeah. They have th- one point nine thirty four third. They have less than forty million committed to next season. That's less than half of their yes cap. And they have to. And they got to get to about sixty, 60 million. Yeah, they got to. They got to add. They got to spend a lot of million dollars just to hit the floor. You so. also have four million dollars in, uh, in buyout money. Not so like three million is coming right yeah. now. You have four million. That's even uh, more, sixteen thousand yeah. six sixty eight and buyout money next year it's one thousand one hundred sixty six six sixty seven. Brent Conley's and Henrik Bordstrom's buyouts oh, are God. done. You're still paying Josh Bailey, uh, Black the, Hawks du- legend. the Duncan Keith, Keith uh, recapture penalty is gone. That's another almost two million. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna need to spend. Um, so, yeah. so the only even, retention you have is two million on uh, McCabe. Yeah, so even if you're, oh, I'd love to have him back. You so, got to resign Vlasic. You got yeah. So Vlasic needs a contract extension. I wonder if, I wonder if to help, uh, the get to the cap floor that kind of situation, and to make sure that you know you lock up Alex Vlasic, uh, early. You give him not the short term like, oh here's three years at five and a half or whatever. You give him eight years at six, six and a half, Done seven in a heartbeat, like, you know, like seven by six, let's, eight you know, in, six. invest, Done. invest in him. I, that's good. That's not going to be a bad investment. I, no, I, I don't that's think that's going to be a bargain be, by the all-star break of next. Yeah. Season. I don't think yeah. that's going to be a bad idea to, to do something like that. So, but outside of that, they're going to have to spend some money. And, and, and I think it's going to be uh, a situation where they could, they could go to one of these, you know, mid, to upper level free agents like a DeBrusque or, or a Domi or Tavo, like they could go and say, like, look, like, what is what does three years five million mean to you, kind of thing. The one team I could see if Jake DeBrusque doesn't have a lot of demand, there's one team I see that he would take literally the hometown discount to play for, and that would be the Edmonton Oilers. He was born in Edmonton. His dad Louis is the yeah. color man. For the Oilers, yeah, I could see the, and that's a team that still has a championship <coughs> window open. They do. It could be looking for that's a, a bargain. team that could be like, "Hey, Louie, you want to come here for two years for five million total?" Even though the Blackhawks, Jake. Are like, yeah, but right. then you you right. suddenly give uh, Louie a 
<laughs> Here's a five million dollar broadcasting contract. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Hey, you want to do this Oops. podcast for five does, five million? Does that text say Jake? Week? Oops. Sorry, um, that's a typo. Yeah. So uh, I could see the Oilers saying, "Hey, we can only afford to pay you this, but come home." Yeah, come home. Yeah, maybe be a big part but, of things uh, here. Another guy I like is is Jack Roslovic. He's a center. You could use some depth down the center. Six one, two hundred pounds. Uh, a former number one overall pick by the Jets. Jack Roslovic? Uh, he was first round pick, 25th first overall. First round. That's what okay. I said. Yeah. You said first overall. Wow. I was like, whoa. No. That's, one that's, that's, that's incorrect. Yeah. First okay. round pick. Yes. Yes. This is what happens when my old man brain is <laughs> up is three one, hours past his one bedtime. One nineteen in the morning. Uh, but that's a guy that I think yeah. could help out the Hawks as well. I mean, yeah, he's had absolutely. some 20 goal seasons, 40 points, 45 points. Mm-hmm. Uh, and is a career. Uh, his faceoff numbers aren't great, so he'll fit in perfectly. Um, <laughs> but I, I think he's a guy, another guy who's only uh, twenty seven. Just 27. turned twenty seven in January, so okay. and made two million this year. So he's going to be a cheaper guy. Yeah. Um, so uh, first round pick. Do it. Why the hell not? All right, let's wrap things up. We got our segments to pay off here. Oh do we have our four star of the game ready to go, Law? Oh, who is our final four star of our the final game? Four star of the game is Lucas Reichel. Lucas He's Reichel. had what, like yeah. three or four in the last week or so? He's been playing well. Yeah, good. Seventy-nine percent of the vote. Not game. not bad for a guy that was labeled a bust by some in our chat just a uh, mere six it's weeks ago. Crazy. It's, it's like a twenty-one-year-old's career isn't determined yet. Crazy. Played well. All right, uh, Connor's corner. Do we want to go uh, here tonight? Ding well, dong, let's uh, ding, let's ding, just pause dong. real quick. Just play the music. I mean, that that was let's let's not go to negativity yet. Let's go to Luke Zeman. We don't have to show the stats. Let's, let's go to just Luke. play the music. Yeah, uh, super, super chat on loop until the show. Now let's let's hear the super chat. Go ahead, guys. Uh, Luke says, "Appreciate all the hard work, guys. Haven't been able to watch a ton recently since college, but have watched after." On to next season, and maybe Greg and I will share a pack of gummy bears someday. Well, there you go. I don't share gummy bears. You're going to have to get your own pack. <laughs> yeah, yeah two packs. If you were watching yes. the watch along, we can. Uh, I was not offered any. No, get your own gummy bears. All right, let's go to Connor's Corner here. All right, let's see. Hockey gave them to me, not you. Ooh, we got a new addition. What? Oh, the golf bag. Uh, uh, he's got a golf bag full of shift hockey sticks. Well, yeah, because, you know, he doesn't actually golf. He just wants to play more hockey. Yeah, so there. Yeah. Yeah. he understands the concept of the offseason. He's he's upgrading but. from those not Sherwoods. Yeah, there's some milk and cookies in there. Mm-hmm. What's he watching, Bluey? Uh, yeah, that is the sign episode, which uh, oh. just came out on Sunday. Jeez. Am I allowed to watch Bluey as an adult, yes. as a yes. child that's not you interested? Are. You, you, you are. sure are. You learn a lot about life and yourself by watching Bluey. A hundred, like, it's also I a was, kid show. Balling. It's like learning about uh, Daniel Tiger's whore mother. <laughs> oh my God! What? Cheating with the baker. I'm sorry. What? Yeah, watch it. <laughs> Daniel Tiger's mother mm-hmm. is banging Baker Aker. Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> you don't bake another man's <laughs> wife a is love cake. Baker sorry. Aker or Breaker Aker? No, a little bit of both. <laughs> Break her, ache her. Yeah, you don't make another man's wife a, lo- a heart cake. A hard cake? Heart. Huh. Oh. Someone brought your wife a heart shaped cake. Would you be like, cool, thanks? Well. Mm. Uh, what kind of cake is it though? Like it's, it's full it's of gluten. It's a good point. Well, then, <laughs> then we're throwing hands. <laughs> well, if, it, if it's a chocolate cake, I'm okay with that as long as I get a piece. <laughs> this is my uh, Roman Empire, as they say. <laughs> is uh, uh, Daniel Tiger's mom and the baker? Is it kind of like uh, Alice and Sam the Butcher on the <laughs> Pretty Much? <laughs> <laughs> Sam like the Sam butcher, the Butcher bringing Alice, Alice the meat. meat. Yeah. Oh, yep. God. <laughs> exactly. Beastie Boys. Uh, what do we gotta do? Uh, Who's not your hawk? Who's not your hawk? Hey, that's me. Congratulations, Way to close Greg. out the, the season. <laughs> Finish strong. The goal today was to pick which hawk would be worst, and Greg was the wiener yeah, as not, he selected Jared Tenorti. Not, or, not only worst of the three of us, but he picked <laughs> the Tenorti, worst guy on the ice. who had the worst blue lines of the entire that team. That should be worth nine wins. I'm the champion. I mm, win. No. I not win. Not so much. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that I was, like that logic. <laughs> I win. I Not win. So All right, fair enough. Uh, so yeah, I. Uh, th- that's the we relied on the blue lines for the last time. Next season's who's your hawk will have official written out scoring rules. There will be a written rule book that we will even like post on the website in the Discord so everybody knows and can play along at home. There yes, that works. Basically, just gonna 
go to my fantasy hockey league and copy that <laughs> scoring system and apply it. Who's got first pick for next year? I think it's you, Mario. You are uh, the least recent to win. Well, are we going by? Could do the preseason standings. Finish. Oh, we gonna do preseason. Oh, preseason. Yeah, do the That's preseason. That's how we did it. Yeah. That's how we did it this year. Do preseason to work out the kinks of our new All scoring right, system, enough, and then sure, whoever. Sure. Sure. Wins the preseason, picks last for the regular season. Lord Hosa says, I owe everyone a tankathon result. No, I don't. I said 130. It's no, a 129. One, one I will tell you who finished second, the Ottawa Senators. Big jump for them. Oh, wow. It was Utah, wasn't it? Utah's so oh, winning. My God. Utah's I swear, winning the I draft. swear. It's going to happen. Utah wins, ugh. It was not Utah. Good. Wonderful. Yep, we got the 130. All right. Uh, there you go. Who I it? shit you not. It was the Black Hawks. I went to tank spin for the first time. This entire season. I've never been to Tankathon all year. Clicked it once and the Hawks won. Then we don't have to do it again. Why jinx it? Hawks won, Ottawa two. I like it. Ottawa two, huh? Sharks three? They had to I didn't look at three. I was they like, have, holy they, 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 they can only, go, they yeah. only go down that far. Yep, nice. And gentlemen, it is now golf season, so we have that beautiful golf shirt available in the CSGO locker. It's playoff season. It is, it is yeah. golf Not for season. the Blackhawks. For the Blackhawks. It's playoff season for me. I do like that golf shirt. Maybe I got to get one shirt. time for this year's outing. All right, we got to go. It's super late. Yeah, no, let's, we appreciate no. you being here. <laughs> it's not like we've been doing like four straight. Hours I know we still have a ton of people how about, watching. How about happy. more uh, children's TV show? That's that's what my only theory. theory. I I might have been a little harsh <laughs> when I called her a whore, but I, I mean, do I, think I, there is some uh, suspect activity going on. Sus between Baker Aker and Mrs. Tiger. I'm sorry. Does Baker Aker have the riz. He sure does. <laughs> Apparently. Somebody put in the cake. Yeah. It's not the only thing you put in the cake. Anyway. Uh, don't forget. Uh, oh, yeah. Steven, with a good comment, says, What Chaos was talking about some teams needing to find their, quote, Felino. I was listening to that the other day. I believe it was Tuesday's episode. And the point being was, like, there's a lot of teams that bring in veteran guys to be leaders, but those guys suck. <laughs> and it, it doesn't work, right? Like, sure. I think they were specifically talking about Eric Johnson. <laughs> and how it's like, all right, you bring no, this guy in, and point. like, yeah, he's yeah. he's been around, and he's like, yeah. yeah, he's got a lot of experience, but he's but he's, he's definitely bringing the team down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The guy that is the reason you lost should not be the guy yelling. Yes, at you to and play th that's why and Felino was such a great move because you brought in a guy to be that leader, to be the veteran who's been on every sort of team in the world, and he's good. Yeah. And he's an effective player. He's, he's playing his role. Yes. yes. And yes, Daniel Tiger originated as one of Mr. Rogers' puppets, but he has his own animated show. Yes. Now. Yes. It, it is actually that. a very. Yes. It, it is a, took the place we, of Mr. Rogers. Apparently, after, there's like wife okay. swapping and cuckold going on in this. You <laughs> Just <know>. one. <laughs> yeah, we we went through a Daniel Tiger phase. I'd never noticed the uh, baking situation. This is one episode, but it's attention. a little bit interesting. I got to get my daughter into Daniel Tiger. No. Are you, do you have Doc McStuffins? Octonauts. No. Oh, that, was the the, that, that was the Octonauts? big one. Octonauts? Yes. No, I haven't done that one yet. Or uh, what's the one? Uh, Puffin Rock. That's a good one. Uh, there's there's Puffin a lot Rock? I did a lot of that in college. I think it was Puffin, <laughs> Puffin, Puffin Rock. Is that what it's AKA called? AKA Whippets. All right. We're going to wrap up for reals this time. Yes. Uh, don't forget, uh, we're back Saturday. Season, postseason, you know, wrap up. So we're going to have the exit interviews, all that stuff. We'll have a ton of video and audio for you from various players, coaches. I think Kyle Davidson is going to speak for a long time. It's going to be a big If day. we're prioritizing, we are going to prioritize uh, Kyle Davidson because he speaks very rarely. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot coming on Saturday. Shows at 2.30. Then Monday, back at the normal time, we'll probably do a mailbag show again. And that night at 6, we'll be at the Barn Hockey Bar watching the playoffs Our right there in Ogden between Adams and Monroe. So coming out to the Barn on Monday, 6 o'clock, no tickets necessary. It's free. Just show up and come hang out with us. Are we hard set on 2.30 on Saturday? Because what if it goes long? I mean, I don't think anyone else is going to be here. So All right. Right? It is uh, Sarah's in the, in, the, in the chair for you. Um, and, yeah, that's the only show okay. on the schedule. Awesome. All right. So All right. that's, that's you, know, you can also save some audio for me on Monday. I like, you know, leftovers. Oh, there'll be plenty. I'm sure there'll be. Yeah, there'll be a lot. Yeah. A lot to, be to a lot. take over and maybe some clips for later in the offseason, too. And uh, really, a uh, lot of people watching, a lot of people liking. Uh, it is 1.30 a.m., basically. Yeah. Uh, you did a whole watch along with us. You did a full post game with us. Uh, we love you, truly. Like this. These guys is the best. Even though we yell at you sometimes, uh, it's for your own sanity. 
and it's for uh, your own good. Yeah, it's for your own good. Um, we're not mad at you. We're disappointed but, in you. But honestly, every day I wake up like pinching myself that this is my job, mm-hmm. and every day I worry that somehow, some way, this is gonna be yanked away from me, and I'm gonna have to go back to a desk job and be miserable. Mm. Um, but I don't think it's gonna because we have diehards, literal diehards who pay their harder money to support us yes. and the people that are with us every show. Mm-hmm. Uh, it all helps. It all matters. The likes matter. The subscribes matter. All that stuff. But just your presence um, at the end of 82 long games and a 52-point season mm-hmm. um, to see you all still here with us this late in the season, this late in the evening, uh, really means the world to all of us. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it doesn't end tonight. we got all off-season to get excited about uh, next year, draft lottery, draft, free agency, tr- uh, prospect camp, training camp, and then boom, next season uh, starts up Before in you October. Know it. And uh, you got Ice Hogs postseason to be excited about as well. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's a good it's a good time to be a Blackhawks fan. It's gonna get it's gonna get fun, more fun, real soon. Yeah, All right. absolutely. All right, we'll talk to everybody on Saturday afternoon. Thanks for being with us. We appreciate you. We love you. We'll talk to you Saturday on the CHGO Blackhawks podcast. We all silly like the mayor.